This is the GM Magna Ride Strut. These things will set you back about 700 bucks at the dealership. They uh, seem to be lasting, at least for people I know about, almost three and a half years, if you can get there. Uh, you can see the part number there. Supposedly it's under high pressure or gas, maybe when they're new, I'm not quite sure. So I tried to get the, uh, the magical fluid out of these things. And I drilled a hole there, nothing came out. So then I drilled a hole here, nothing came out. Then I drilled a hole up here, nothing still came out. Uh, typically what these things do, as you can see, the seals up top will blow. I cut the pigtail wiring off because it makes it easier to change these things. Uh, this here is a plastic cap. You're probably watching the video because you're sitting there wondering how the heck this thing costs uh, $800 or $700 from the dealer and then they want roughly eleven to $1,200 to install just one, one corner out the door. So you're looking at uh, just front and left on this 2016 Suburban LTZ was going to be roughly $2,200 to $2,400 for a strut that was only three years old and probably around 50,000 miles or so on it. So. What I'm going to try to do is uh, cut this guy open and let's see what it looks like on the inside. Alright, so after you pull that plastic cap off, that aluminum piece comes off, and or steel, whatever it is. And then you can see there, supposedly it's under high pressure. Everything looks pretty good. The rod looks nice and smooth. I, think, I don't know if I'm going to cut or draw out those holes. But uh, the other thing I did was I salvaged some of that fluid. Put it onto a, uh, if I can get a focus here, there we go. So it does dance around when I put a rare earth magnet on it, which is actually pretty cool. So that was the fluid that was in the uh, strut. So it does look like all the other videos on YouTube. A lot of little pins sticking out in cones when it's in a magnetic field, looks pretty cool. So, all right, I'll cut that open. I'm going to try to get some more angles on this because it does look pretty cool. I was hoping to get more of it to play with. But, oh well, back to work cutting that open. So we got it cut open. The tube, and then as you can see, that's... Uh, a little bit different looking. This is where the, uh, I think this is where the electromagnet is stored because usually there's a wire that sticks out right there. Anyhow, you can see where the fluid flows around the electromagnet. Little orifices and there's holes around the sides of it. the other side so I've assumed there's a copper coil in here so we'll take this guy apart later but what you're noticing is this stuff is caked this gray matter is all caked down right here the reason being is the oil when the seal blew at the top of the strut all the oil during its use came out in that fluid um, left the iron filings. So now let's take a look at the seal at the front of this thing. You can see inside the seal there's streaks. Those vertical streaks that go up and down are only on one side of the seal. That's telling me that the shaft was offset and it's going to wear the seal out quickly because if I rotate the seal 180 degrees and I look inside, there's no more vertical. The shaft wasn't pressing on this side of the seal. So that shaft was riding offset. It was putting a side force on the seal and eventually wore it out, which is why the oil was able to escape.
So then, when I took all the gray stuff out, this like powder, I was wondering if this was the mag, um, the ferrous stuff that's suspended in the oil. So I did the logical thing was I uh, took that gray stuff and then I added some Marvel Mystery Oil because it fixes everything. And as you can see here, when you add the Marvel Mystery Oil, the excess will drain out. And then all that gray matter, when it gets uh, wet again, it starts doing its dancing again with the magnetic fields. So that does tell me that all that gray matter is just simply the fluid leaked out and left the iron particles that would typically be floating around in it. So that pretty much sums up what's going on here. I'm really interested. I'm going to cross-section or cut this guy or do something, and then I'll... Uh, I'll film that and we'll see what the coil inside looks like. So there again is another view of some light. You can see vertical lines on the seal. And since they're only on one side or 180 degrees around the seal, it's perfectly fine. I'll show you that now that I got a better angle. Try to get the light good. Got some dirt in there, but there's no vertical lines. It's hard to see with this camera and light. So then that tells me that this shaft here is not riding perpendicular inside of this cylinder. It's offset. So that means that the seal is telling me this guy's offset, so there's got to be more evidence here. So I drew some lines so that you can see how that witness mark is going to tell me much more of what's going inside that piston inside that tube. So you can see here this surface is pretty nice and clean. But when I go a 180 around, see how scuffed that is? Only one side of the piston was taking all the load. So this guy was possibly offset, tilt, most likely offset somehow when it was riding. So maybe it's concentricity. I don't know what's going on here. But anyhow, you got excessive wear on one side of the piston. You can see it better in that lighting. Camera and lighting never really works great for these. And then when I rotate it around, nice, beautiful, polished, pist polished piston. So you can see, you just do a 180. So that mimics what I am sealing, seeing on that seal at the top of the strut that started leaking. So that all makes sense there, too. So now let's take it one step further. they got to have some way. I think I found a, uh, a bearing, a sleeve bearing, inside of this guy. So if we flip this over... There's a bearing in here. Let me see if I can get the lighting. Well, here you can see even more of that gray matter. See how it just cakes up? Yeah, that gray matter cakes up. Oh, there you go. See the uh, that orange? I think that's a uh, sleeve bearing to try to keep the shaft centered. And the funny thing about it, when you go around it, you see that? Same thing. I, you got build up there, so... You go 180 degrees around, it's all nice and clean. That orange, what I think is a bearing to maintain its uh, center of that shaft going up and down in that seal. But then when you rotate it about 180 degrees, the orange is just, it's caked up. I probably can't get the light in there good again. But you can see the, the orange, see how it, it's all caked and built in? It's all scuffed up. So, yeah. That's what was happening. All the load of that shaft kept riding on that side of the bearing, which then eventually caused the shaft to be off-centered or have too much concentricity. And then from there, the seal probably started burping, and then eventually all the fluid leaked out. When all the fluid leaked out, all these iron filings this turned into, like, clay. This stuff is like Play-Doh. It's like clay. And then it clogs up all your orifices here so now you're just packing this stuff down and it just a piston slamming against this clay and then at the bottom of this cylinder this thing's loaded with a bunch of clay down here so all you're doing is hitting clay up and down packing it really tight so i really want to get inside to see what this electromagnetic magnet looks like but these are other uh, verifications of what i could see based on upon the seal at the very top, just that one little scrape. So there is an issue with this guy riding center. It was either 
it seemed like it, it was offset to the side because of the way the load and stresses were going through. So as we know, the fluid flows straight through and then it gets jammed up in the magnetic field. So if we look at the cross section here of that piston, we can see a few things. One, you can't press it off because they got a snap ring here locating it on the shaft down there. You have an upper portion of the, of the piston right here. You've got where the coil is, which is right here, and you can see the two portions of the coil. The lower portion, and then there's an upper housing here. This is actually separate. You can't really see it too well probably on the camera. And then it appears in manufacturing they roll this wall for the piston to be one piece from top to bottom. It's like one big sandwich. And then I would and then the wires, they come down the middle of the shaft and they there's some connections that are made to this coil. So this is a pretty fundamental basic design. And this tutorial effectively shows you, or teardown, shows you how this thing works. Uh, have fun replacing them on your car because these things aren't cheap. Bye.